Good morning. Welcome to the morning coffee. Welcome to Monday morning, August 24th. Uh, the morning coffee is part of the Provoking Safety channel where we think, talk, and do safety with the intention of provoking safety at home and in the workplace. So, hey, good Monday morning to you. Welcome to a brand new week. Today is International Waffle Day. Yeah! Waffles! Yeah, waffles. Who doesn't like waffles? Those tasty waffles with lots of syrup. What an excellent way to start off a Monday is International Waffle Day. Have a waffle. Anyway, today, a little bit more of heart-tugging notes uh, that I want to bring you. It, You know, I think I'm going to call this segment Magic Powder or Weird Science. Let's let's just get into the article and uh, we, or articles and we can talk about it. There's been a study done uh, between the use of what's called McIntyre powder in Ontario mines and the risk of Parkinson's. Quite a while ago, and we'll go into the history real quick uh, in, in a bit, but this mining company uh, created a powder, and basically they didn't create it, it was, it's based on aluminum hydroxide and some other aluminum traces and other metals, which also adds to the scariness of this whole deal. Workers were made to inhale this fine aluminum dust known as McIntyre powder to prevent silicosis. Yeah, let that one sink in. You, they were forced to go into a room and inhale this powder as a preventative measure from silicosis. We'll get into more of it in a sec. This went on until 1979. Go figure. And it was shortly after 1960, uh, thanks to the Canadian Labor Congress, the Canadian Federation of Labor. Sorry if my history uh, escapes me at the moment. Thankfully, unions across Canada gathered together and they were able to get laws passed for basic rights for workers in Canada, the right to uh, know the hazards that they're dealing with, the right to refuse what they consider as unsafe work, and the right to participate in the health and safety initiatives and, and processes within their workplace, like health and safety committees. So it's funny that this was happening up until 1979. Don't know why, we won't get into the uh, why it occurred, but let's look at what exactly McIntyre powder is. Okay, it was, and it was labeled right on there, and it said aluminum oxide, aluminum hydroxide, all sorts of different things. Like if you look at the content on the on the pictures, it says aluminum 15%, aluminum oxide 85%. And so you're breathing in one contaminant to counteract another. Don't see the logic, kind of. Like I said, weird science. But that's not science! Or sorcery. Uh, and this was went on from 1943 and on. And, and we'll just look a bit more. Uh, many of the miners started to develop, or they're now developing in their later years, respiratory and neurological illnesses. And I'll post the links below in the comments, or pardon me, in the description section. And you can go back and have a look. But they said that... Uh, there would be a black fog in the room, a black dust cloud came out of the compre uh, compressed air system in the change rooms. I don't know, but you know, as the people that dreamed this weird idea up, ever since I was a little kid, I've always understood that the air I sh breathe should be clear. It should, I should be able to see through it uh, and you know, and well, like anything, if there's anything in the air and I'm breathing it, chances are it's not good for me. Uh, and as I said, I'll, I'll post it in here, and I'll post the wiki, a link to the Wikipedia article and the um, this article here from the uh, National Institutes of Health, so you can understand it better. But maybe what I should get to is just the points about all of this. It's sad enough and and a bit much, but let's look at some of the health and safety points. Health and safety has come a long way. We now use books like this. This one's a little bit outdated, but it tells the threshold um, limit values of chemical substances and, and uh, physical agents, such as, say, aluminum oxide, for instance, and how much. And, uh, of course, the biological exposure ind indices, what we can be exposed to, and, and the limits. 
There is a science behind health and safety. It's not weird voodoo witch doctor science like we just talked about. Thinking weird science. Health and safety professionals will review the science behind anything and they'll ensure that it's uh, credible sources that they're dealing from when, when they have to explore new controls or new processes to counteract uh, hazardous situations. So it, it's not like a lot of people think where uh, it's just put on a hard hat or that's a falling object, don't stand under it or whatever. There, there's more to it than that. And it's certainly not like this where somebody just dreams up a treatment and, and thinks it's a good idea because they read an article somewhere. And that's basically what you're going to look at. You're going to see that there was some published articles that were, weren't even, they were just hypotheses at the time. They weren't even definite for certain um, finding. I don't even know if you can call it science. Not real science. <laughs> As a worker, number one, you should always be asking questions. You have those three basic rights in Canada. The right to refuse unsafe work. The employer has a responsibility to prove it's safe to you. You have the right to know the hazards in what you're dealing with. So like hazard assessments, I know I preach on them lots, but I, there's not enough. Hazard assessments have to be conducted before work takes place and workers that are going to participate in the work and perform those tasks have to be made aware of the hazards. And finally, you have the right to participate in everything that has to do with health and safety in the workplace, to a certain extent, of course. But uh, having a voice on a health and safety committee or being able to present to a health and safety committee or ask them, you have that right as a worker. And you have the right to ask the health and safety professionals for the science behind something or whatever. I mean, through my career, I've got asked lots and I had to spend a lot of time proving stuff to, to workers, but by all means, they have that right to ask and that right to know. Any health and safety professionals out there, go ahead, feel free to comment below. Uh, I'm on your side and, and we do, that's what we do. We, we, we use credible science and credible proof and actual published uh, peer-reviewed articles and academic reviewed articles, etc., as part of the basis of everything we do. We've reached the end. Until next time, think safety, talk safety, and do safety. That way we provoke it at home and in the workplace. Okay, bye for now. Thank you.